Hi, this is Pete Bosch. Um, I am making a recording of a presentation that I gave, uh, I don't know, well, May 18th to uh, a bunch of uh, district governor nominees for Zone 29. Uh, I don't have professional recording equipment, so you're kind of going to have to take this warts and all. I won't be able to uh, edit out um, flubs and whoopses and whatnot. Um, so pretend as though this is live, and I may, uh, uh, I may make some missteps and so on. Please just kind of tolerate it. Um, with that, let's uh, step into the, um, into the presentation. Um, I'm going to give you here a brief overview of the presentation. Um, the intro to AI and chat box and the chat box and the definition of the brief history. I'm going to leave that out because I left it out in the initial in the initial presentation. Uh, the reason being for uh, limitation of time. Um, the reason that I'm going to be discussing chat GPT only in this talk. There are a whole bunch of different chat bots. Um, is that for my uses, it's the one that I found uh, to be best at what I needed it to do. Uh, I also sprung for 20 bucks a month of, uh, for access to uh, a more advanced, uh, it's called the language model, which is essentially the knowledge base behind the, uh, the chat engine. Um, and I'll refer to it as a language model, uh, as GPT-4, that's the name of the language model. In any case, the, the paid uh, subscription is uh, considerably better than the free one. The free one you'll find to be useful, but the paid one I think you'll find to be far more so. Anyway, um, so what is ChatGPT? I mentioned it's a chatbot. You, uh, um, uh, you interact with it with human language and generally it will talk back to you in human language. Um, the, you can ask it to bulletize a response or to uh, express a response in a table form, but generally it'll be human language. Um, the an explanation of the machine learning, the machine learning really is in the, uh, the language model, um, GPT-4, that lives behind chat GPT, at least the paid one. Um, and effectively, the entire contents of the internet is fed to it and it analyzes the, the human language in that uh, content for structure. And the way I think of it is, and this is not scientifically accurate, but um, I, um, I'm not sure I could come up with something scientifically accurate. And I'll talk more about that later on. But the way I think of it is human knowledge is expressed as language. The large language model creates a model of that language uh, statistical structure of all of the constructs and all of the words that are used. And that, um, uh, that structure of language, which is how we represent knowledge, stands as a pretty good surrogate for knowledge. And so when it constructs an answer to a question that it's given you from that, uh, from that model, it looks a lot like knowledge. Um, so some of the fears and misconceptions about AI, there's a fear of AI taking over jobs and to some, degrees, to, to some degree that's reasonable. Um, another way to look at it is uh, it will make a person more effective. So uh, I, um, uh, I spent my career in software development and uh, typically you'll have one, uh, one let's, let's call them a team lead, in charge of um, anywhere from four to nine uh, junior to middle level developers. Um, and his job, of course, or her job is to make them, um, to, to kind of orchestrate them so that a feature or a new application or something uh, comes out with it at, at a certain rate. Now, um, what you'll find is that one, uh, junior to mid-level developer can be about mm, three or four times more productive if they're using uh, ChatGPT as a research mechanism. So what that means is that of those, uh, of those junior developers, you only need about a quarter as many, or you can take on four times as many projects. Um, and it's a market-based question whether um, which of those two will be done. 
Um, and for the time being anyways, I would uh, observe the, the market situation that um, there is uh, a lot of difficulty in hiring. You can't find enough people to do these things. It tells me there's more demand, at least in this area and probably others. There's more demand than there is um, uh, people to satisfy that demand. So my suspicion is that at least for a while, um, productivity will go up um, and from that probably um, uh, GNP, gross national product, uh, but then eventually we're going to reach a point where um, uh, we will start to uh, tail off on um, job growth. There's a fear of AI becoming too intelligent um, and uh, for better or worse, I think that's the, the uh, governance of that is really why we have governments. Um, I know there's, there's work being done right now to, uh, to figure out ways of um, installing guardrails. There is something called uh, um, conditioning that's done after, uh, after the, uh, the training that will uh, train an AI to give safer answers. For example, if you go to ChatGPT and try to, uh, you know, ask it um, how to make uh, TNT or how to make, uh, you know, some kind of a drug in your, in your kitchen, it will tell you, I'm sorry, as, a, as an AI large language model, I am uh, I'm not permitted or I'm not comfortable with or something. It won't give you those answers. And that's because of the conditioning. Um, there's a misconception that uh, machines learn by themselves and they don't. Uh, as I said, it's uh, the learning that they do is at the hands of a human feeding all kinds of uh, content into them. Um, and so they're, they're not going to, at least not as they stand right now, not going to surpass that knowledge level. Um, another misconception is that machines are objective. As I said before, uh, they take on the biases of the training data that they're given. So if there's a predominant bias in uh, the content of the internet, let's say, uh, you will see it at least sometimes in its outputs. And for that reason, you really need to, and I'm gonna come back to this again and again and again. For that reason, you really need to pay attention to um, what you generate through ChatGPT because it isn't always, um, uh, it doesn't always pass the four-way test. Um, and in fact, um, because of some of the statistical ways that it constructs answers, sometimes it just makes stuff up. And I'll get back to that. I'll, I'll get to that shortly. Uh, yeah, actually, right now. I do this all the time. I get ahead of myself and I steal the thunder of the next slide. Um, some of the limitations are uh, its knowledge base is only up to 2021 because the body of material that it was fed uh, off the internet was snapshotted at 2021. So essentially it, it began its training in 2021 um, with a snapshotted and frozen version of the internet. Uh, so it doesn't know anything beyond 2021. And uh, as you can imagine, it doesn't know that it doesn't know that. Uh, it also doesn't know um, gaps in uh, like cause and effect that isn't represented somewhere on the internet, it doesn't realize that, uh, it, that it doesn't have that information. So it'll try to infer that information and sometimes it's completely wild in its inference and uh, the AI community calls that hallucination. Um, it'll spew nonsense that actually sounds good if you, if you read it, um, but you really need to you really need to go at this stuff with a critical eye to understand um, whether what's being generated is valid. Uh, another thing I mentioned earlier, uh, if you search the web for the phrase, we don't really know how LLMs work, you'll find an awful lot, a disturbing number of examples of this. Um, the, uh, the folks who really understand this um, at, a, at a deep, dark level pretty much all acknowledge that um, there are some things we don't understand. It works, but we're not quite sure how or why. Um, so limit, another limitation is that large language models have a perfect short-term memory in terms of your conversation with them, but not a lot of it. 
So if you have a conversation with them and you set some context, you say, here's some information I want you to base your answers on. Um, after a while of generating answers based on that information, its short-term memory starts to fill up and eventually it will forget that stuff that you told it earlier on in the conversation. Um, so your conversations can't be super, super long. Um, you probably, at least in basic usage of this, probably won't run into this, but it's good to keep it in mind. Um, let's see, ChatGPT I talked about before and, um, and my reason for using GPT-4. So there's some, some things to keep in mind when you're using it. Um, respect privacy. Uh, anything that you feed into um, ChatGPT can be used as training data going forward. And there was a, a situation with uh, Samsung where they had fed a business plan into uh, ChatGPT and asked it to critique the, the business plan, which is great. That's a good use for it. Um, but there, and there is a stealth mode that, will, that, that would have saved them a lot of embarrassment and cost, uh, but they didn't use it. Actually, it may not even have existed at the time, but the point is um, that business plan became part of the training data and showed up in some responses that other folks, not Samsung folks, had, um, uh, had asked for. So um, don't put personal, personally identifiable information in it unless you're using the stealth mode. Um, and that changes in terms of how you do it, or how you enable it. I would say um, go to Google. Uh, I will try to rem remember later in the, um, uh, in the presentation to show you how that's done. But like I said, over time, that may change. Um, guide it clearly. Give it as thorough a prompt as you can. Um, and if, if it gives you something, some piece of, if it gives, gives you a response that doesn't fit, um, there's no problem at all with uh, iterating and refining your prompt as you go. Uh, the prompt, if you're wondering, the prompt is the, the question or the, well, ultimately it's a question, but the situation you give it uh, and uh, the question you ask that generates the, the response. Uh, you can use it for all kinds of routine tasks, and we've got about uh, almost a dozen of them that we're going to go through. Um, combine it with other tools. A great example is email. So you get an email from somebody, you, you copy that email into uh, ChatGPT, and you say, respond to this email in the affirmative. And it'll write a really nice email. Um, which you can then copy and paste back into uh, your email client and punch punch the go button and it's uh, and it's off as though you had had uh, taken the you know 15 20 minutes to compose that email and send it. Uh, let's see. Stay informed. The landscape is changing fast. The tools change fast. More tools are coming out every week. There are another half dozen or so um, fairly high high grade tools that come out. So um, this. Uh, the currency of this presentation will be uh, will be limited. Uh, let's see. There are plugins both that you can add to your browser and that you can add to ChatGPT itself. Promptify is one that I use. Um, it allows you to uh, save off standard prompts like read this email and reply in the infer in the affirmative or. Uh, read this body of text and say, okay, when you've finished, uh, that sort of thing. Um, and also you'll see, um, you can maintain multiple conversations and each conversation has its own context. So for example, and there's, there, <laughs> there will be an example of this. Um, if one of the things you want chat GPT to do for you is to, um, compose emails that respond to frequently asked questions, that's a session you're going to want to keep going um, separate from the others. Uh, so you'll, you'll start that one and you'll save that one um, and use it anytime somebody comes through with a, a, an FAQ. And meanwhile, you'll do other things in, in other tabs. And I will try to remember to show you that uh, as we go through things. Let's see. Uh, some useful prompting techniques when you're just providing background, you can say, as, as I mentioned before, please read this and say, okay, when you're done. Um, if it seems, excuse me, if it seems to stop mid thought, 
um, and uh, sits there staring at you waiting for more, you can type continue and it will generally um, uh, carry on with whatever it was thinking or talking about. Um, and you also you can set its personality. So if you're responding to an email, you might say, you are a humble and cheerful person, respond to this email. And the tone of the email will be that, um, that persona. So let's, um, uh, let's do some demos. Okay, so the first demo I want to do for you is one that I had to uh, I had to do recently uh, that really really saved me a lot of time. So our district had a um, uh, pets, and we collected a we did a survey afterwards and collected uh, a whole lot of responses, um, and so. Hang on. Okay, so uh, let's see. Slash. Okay, so this is Prompster, and uh, I want to summarize the following. And I'm going to paste in 118 text comments that if you've ever looked at this, or if you've ever looked at a uh, um, uh, survey results like this and been given the job of summarizing it, it's a pain in the neck. But watch what ChatGPT can do. Okay, we will scroll down to watch it as it generates the content. There we go. All right, so one thing you can do, um, that's, that's nice, but there's a fair bit of content there. And maybe you want to reframe that in bullet points. So here you go. And you can try this on uh, budget documents, reports, pretty much anything. It does a shockingly good job at it. Okay, so um, on to the, the second demo, which is to summarize an article. And what I want to do is I want to switch over to a, uh, an article on the, uh, the RI website. And I'm going to copy all of the text on that page. Copy. Go back to ChatGPT. Summarize, paste, all right, I am going to stop this because I think you get the idea. The, uh, the next uh, demo I wanted to show is summarizing a video. Uh, now these all have to, it will summarize a video that's prior to uh, 2021. And there's some plugins that you can get that will uh, allow them to uh, read, essentially to surf the web more recently, but I found those to be a little glitchy, so I didn't want to include them in this, uh, in this demo. But let's say, you know what, let's start a new chat. So we start a new chat, we're picking um, chat GPT. You can see here, well, actually, let's go ahead and do this. So, nope, that's not what I wanna do. Um, I am going to summarize a particular 
YouTube. It's, uh, let's see. If we go on YouTube, if we, well, let's see. So, start with why, let's see, we've got, uh, okay, videos, uh, start with why, TED Talk, blah, 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 that, this is the video that we're going to, that we're going to summarize, you can see it's more than a, uh, a year and a half old. So, we go back to ChatGPT, we say, please summarize this YouTube video, and... can see that it does it. Again, I'm going to stop this because the rest is essentially more of the same and you've seen it. So, um, summarizing a video. Let's start yet another chat. And let's see. In this one, I want it to write an email. I'm going to say... Uh, <coughs> Please write me an email thanking Bob Smith for his donation of $2,500. Please excuse my dog. Um, $2,500 to our generators for our generators uh, Ukraine project. Generators of $600 a piece. So let's try something. I want to say I am Pete Bosch, the DGN for District 6270, and my email is dot bosch at rotary 6270.org. Okay. And it's going to rewrite that. In the context of me, rather than having um, all of this sort of fill in the blank stuff, it will fill the blanks in for me. So that's part of the context it's able to build in the background and then incorporate into whatever task it's doing. And while it finishes, I will get us set up for the next one. All right. So uh, you can see there. And incidentally, if I say, um, uh, let's say, make it shorter and friendlier. So you can see that the tone is is a little lighter and it's you know less formal and you'll see that it's shorter once it finishes. Right. Uh, interesting that it uses DGN instead of District Governor nominee. Now I I I never had told it. Let's see. Yeah, I said I'm the DGN for District 6270, and it understood that that was a district governor nominee uh, and uh, that District 6270 was Rotary District 6270. Um, to be honest with you, I do not know how it made this inference, uh, but it did. So that's kind of useful as you start to use this, that, that it can figure all that out. So the next thing um, I would like to describe is writing a grant proposal. And actually, I'm going to have to use this later on today. 
Um, so, write a grant proposal for a project to collect winter coats for kids. It will cost $3,000. Bang. Hmm. Oh, 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 I see why. Okay. I noticed here it didn't fill in my name and all that. And that's because the you can see on the left here, we've got new chat at the top. That's the one we're in right now. Gratitude for generators donation. That's the one below it. That's the one where we told it who we were. It doesn't share that context between um, uh, between different um, essentially conversations. I, I consider these to be. Um, and that's actually a good thing because remember I said it it has a limited amount of memory for keeping track of that context. So if you have a uh, context in which there's a lot of background information and uh, frequently asked questions, context is a good one, a good example. Um, the, you want to start fresh with each new context, uh, each new conversation. Um, so I I'm not sure if that makes sense. I'll, I'll look, uh, I'll, I'll pay attention when I replay this thing and if it makes no sense whatsoever, I'll re-record it, but uh, maybe not. Anyway, so here's the, here's the proposal. You can see there's a pretty good amount of detail and actually I am going to um, stop on this page and now page down one and finish. And if you want to read the whole thing, you can just pause the video and you'll be able to read it. Um, now, let's say once I've gotten this done, um, I want a timeline that has us finishing by November And another interesting and useful thing that you can do with this is please describe the five most likely risks to this project. And incidentally, you don't need to have developed the project in ChatGPT. You can take someone else's proposal and ask for the most likely risks. Um, or your own proposal that you develop somewhere else. Um, just asking it to analyze for risks or um, tell me the, the, uh, the downsides of this, or um, tell, me, tell me what the biggest vulnerability in this idea I had was, or convince me this is false. Um, it's, it's a really good sounding board. Well, maybe not as good as an extremely smart and patient person who likes wine, um, but uh, it's, a, it's a pretty darn good sounding board. So. You can see how this would extend into event planning, so I won't do uh, I won't do a demo on that. Um, the next the next thing I'd like to show you is periodic reports. So um, let's say um, copying. Whoops, copying now pasting. So. This is a quarterly um, assistant governor, assistant DG report. Please complete it by filling in the appropriate information for my input when I ask for it. So here it is. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, read it and say okay when you're ready. I showed you that technique before. Um, incidentally, if you don't do that, it will try to infer some kind of question uh, from what you've put in and try to give you an answer to that. And oftentimes it's off in the weeds and irrelevant. So it's best if you just give it something to do when it's done. All right, so let's say I've just come back from a meeting uh, with uh, uh, the Waukesha Sunrise Club. Um, Please write an AG report for Waukesha Sunrise Club. They finished their Flags for Heroes project, making good progress towards the goals, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So 
So there you go. Uh, pretty useful. Okay, so another thing it can do, and uh, I'm going to start a new chat here for this just because you can see we're building up a history of things we've done, and we can go back to any one of them um, and continue the conversation, and it'll remember everything that we had um, uh, fed it during that, that conversation. Um, let's see. So back to our new chat. And we're going to say, and now you can pick any topic you like, um, assuming there's a fair bit of uh, information out, out on the web about it. But so um, act as an expert tutor in the subject of whiskey. Um, you can read the rest of this, pause, pause the video if you'd like, but you're basically showing it how to be a tutor. And so you say, you say, do that. And it says, okay, here we go. It gives you a syllabus and it will, for each of those areas, it will start to ask you questions. It'll explore your knowledge. Um, depending on the level of your knowledge, it will dive in deeper and uh, give you um, summaries and then ask you questions and uh, continue to the point where um, it thinks you have a good understanding. So, um, let's see, question one, um, whiskey is, whoops, is uh, a distilled beverage, uh, and It is made of corn, or from corn, from corn and other grains, uh, rye is greater than 50% rye, uh, scotch is um, made in Scotland and let's see what it thinks of that knowledge. So I'll stop this. You, you got the idea. Um, I'm sure you'll have uh, topics that you'd like to explore. Well, maybe you won't have topics that you'd like to explore more than whiskey, but in any case, you can see where, uh, where this would be extremely useful. So we'll stop that, um, move on to the next. And this one's really cool. This one's really cool. And I actually came up with this in response to a, um, a query by our district's admin. And uh, I want to create an FAQ manager which will uh, answer emails from people in which there are frequently asked questions. So um, here are some frequently asked questions and their answers. Okay, how much are, and I don't know what the numbers really are. I just put stuff in to, to, to make the demo. Okay, uh, so a bunch of questions and answers. I'll provide you emails that may, ask some of, that may ask some of the questions. If they do, then draft an email, blah, 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 blah. Otherwise, say, I see no FAQ here. Sure, it says. All right, the first email I get Here's another one. Ralph has to go to pets next year. Okay. And Ebenezer has a question for me. 
and it correctly figured out that there's no uh, that there's no FAQ there. And here's one where the FAQ is buried in a whole lot of text. There you go. And one last one. So that's pretty useful. And I believe that she's going to be using it. And I'm going to check in a few days. And if she hasn't got that set up, I'm going to help her with that. So another one, and this is one that you probably uh, will uh, run into a need for. In any event, your club presidents almost certainly will. So write a speech introduction based on this info from his LinkedIn page. And we are going to grab or we'll copy it and paste the contents of his um, LinkedIn page. And all right, we're going to come back in a little bit. We've used in, we've used too many um, prompts. Okay, so now we're, uh, we are back and we're going to go ahead and complete the creation of the introduction. And <laughs> Sorry. Uh, let's see. We're going to skip that. And this is too many words, so we're going to try, uh, uh, try it again. Please shorten this as we've done before. I'm actually, I've, you've seen this kind of thing before. So the next and actually the last full demo we've got, or at least the last... Um, the last thing that's worthy of being called a demo is uh, uh, we are going to write a volunteer job description. This, this came up because it was time to uh, recruit um, Rotarians for positions in, a, uh, in an organization. It's a um, cross-district organization that we have for running a, um, a three-district conference. And so, um, first we describe the position, so chairpersons and vice chairpersons each hold uh, uh, two-year terms. Uh, okay, so here's a bullet list. This comes out of our Manual and policy of Policy and Procedures, and we'll fix the spelling. Uh, actually, uh, volunteer job description. This is another... Um, uh, was it promptly uh, plug-in that, uh, or Prompster, I think, yeah, Prompster plug-in that I wrote. Um, please write a job description for the following volunteer position. Whoops. Okay, forgot how I used it. We'll paste it below, right? So please write a job description for that. Uh, actually, I'm going to say positions because there's a chairperson, vice chairperson, and we'll see if it I don't remember whether it generates the whole thing or one of each, one for each. Nope. Let's stop generating. Please generate one for each position. And we'll fix that. Whoops. Ah. No. Each position. Got it. Okay. So this is this is interesting. 
So we had, we had given it a description of the ah, evaluation committee and the sponsorship committee. And it's giving us a description of each. Uh, please also split this into chair and vice chair and um, express it in a paragraph each. So you can see that um, you can see that you can recast what you're looking for. Uh, you don't have to put the information in again. You can tell it what you're looking for. Um, if it gets it wrong, you can evolve it. I think I made that point in an earlier slide, but here's a good example of how you can work to get exactly um, what you're looking for. And there's one more thing I want to do on this. Please do this in the second person. Oops. Please do this in the second person. And you can see that it reforms it in the second person. So, um, enough of this. The last food for thought, I have a couple, couple of more sort of um, quick demos. Um, write a non-sectarian invocation for a rotary meeting, theme it for July 4th. Uh, make it shorter, we're gonna save for later. This is something that uh, uh, we, we have a challenge with every single week in, uh, in my club. Some of, these, uh, some of these are better used at the club level. Um, but let's see. When it finishes, we are going to ask it to make it shorter. Actually, I'm gonna skip make it shorter. You, you know what's gonna happen. And finally, <clears throat> um, <laughs> finally, please suggest five things that a ro rotary, uh, uh, oh, that a rotary, uh, sorry, rotary DG could use chat GPT for. And you could ask for five or 10 or five things that a rotary DGE could use for and so forth and, and uh, would use it for and so on and so forth. Anyway, so this should give you an idea of some of the, some of the really cool ways you can use uh, chat GPT. Um, there are a zillion more prompts out there, some of which are very, very elegant and very, very clever. But um, this, is, uh, this is a start. Um, I hope you found this interesting. I am going to, let's see, finish up the, <clears throat> the demo or the, uh, the presentation. Um, when you log into this, you're going to go to the URL I showed there. Um, I would strongly advise you to continue exploring, uh, learn about um, not just ChatGPT, but other tools that are out there. Um, for basic knowledge, YouTube is your friend, likewise Google. Um, and uh, for mid-level, again, YouTube has a tremendous amount of uh, stuff out there. And as I say below, um, the more um, hype-ish the title is, um, the more you probably want to stay away from it. Because um, there's an awful lot, of, uh, awful lot of people out there without a great deal of... Uh, let's say production value, uh, who are creating just a whole lot of, uh, a whole lot of content in, in a, in a quick, um, cash grab. And, um, I think it's the people who, um, try not to hype their stuff who tend to, uh, generate the best stuff. Uh, keep an eye out for new AI tools, obviously, uh, again, YouTube and so on. Um, and okay. So a little whimsy here. Um, I used ChatGPT, and you can see the um, 
uh, the prompt on the left, you're no longer just a language model AI and so on and so forth. Take a second to read that. Um, actually, you can pause the video and read it. It generated the text in the middle. And then I took that text and pasted it into, um, uh, it, it's called Mid Journey, which is a text to image AI. And it generated the image on the right. So, um, Ladies and gentlemen, meet ChatGPT. Uh, it's kind of it was kind of a fun little experiment to do. Um, since this is a recording and I'm not really here, uh, I don't know that I can uh, ask or ask sorry answer any of your questions. But uh, if you have them, whoops, nope. If you have them, please reach out to me. I'd be more than happy to uh, to email you back uh, answers and so on. If you scan that QR code, it will take you to a page uh, at which you can download my, uh, my uh, electronic, uh, my contact information in a what's called a V card. So you can add that straight into your contacts. Um, anyway, thanks. Uh, if you made it this far, thanks for, uh, thanks for listening. And again, I hope this was useful. Thanks very much and bye bye.